Gearheads, welcome back to the channel. We're busting out the tea bucket again. We got a lot of stuff to do in this episode. Our back ordered parts are in. But I want to thank One Car Stereo for sponsoring episode six of our tea bucket build, which we'll talk about this shortly. All right, guys, so episode five, remember we got these seats put in here and we found that we had, you know, a significant amount of flex and the flex is not in the body itself. It's, it's actually in the seat, the seats flex, uh, pretty bad. So I know some of you guys said, go ahead and block up the body. I really do not want to block up the body and I'm, I'm hoping I'm not making a crazy mistake here, but the body itself is, 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 is pretty sturdy here. There isn't really any flex in it. So the solution here, I think, is we'll just use this scrap piece of wood here, but we're gonna actually mount a back brace here or backbone, or we're gonna do a little something back here. I'm not gonna take it all the way to the edge, but uh, may try to, I don't know, cope it in somehow over there. Haven't really figured it out. So we're just gonna wing it as we go. But I did find that once I got this in here, the entire flex and I sat in it and it was perfectly fine. So just that little bit up here really changed a lot. Now, I can't just run a piece of wood all the way across because the body is tapered. It's got a bow to it. So I can only go as far as up to these indentations here on both sides, if that, before we start getting into some little weird little uh, complications there. But yeah, that, that seat. When you sit in it, I just do not like it. So, did pull out the saw over here and we're gonna be that neighbor. So let's get this sucker set up here and get some wood cutting going there. So I got some rough measurements on this thing. And like I said, we'll, we'll cut a few pieces to kind of see how we're gonna do it. We may taper the edge. I'm not really too sure, but We'll go ahead and start just at 42, just for now. And then we'll fit it from there because of the angle of the way the bucket is set up. So let's go with this wood for now and see how this actually works out. Maybe we'll stack these instead. So we'll measure there. So we need to shorten these up just a little more. So we got everything cut down here and everything fits. I did end up getting this glued and let it sit for a couple hours. We'll end up running it probably through a planer just to even it out. But this should solve our backrest issue here. And then for the seat, Yep, so no more flex. The flex here is just gonna be in the back of the body, even though it's pretty sturdy. By adding this, it kind of bows this out just a little bit. But I'm thinking if we add maybe some blocking, I guess I'm gonna get stuck with blocking anyways. I may be able to fix that back in here by adding some blocks just on the back end for more sturdiness. Yeah, I think that's gonna work out pretty well there. That flex is gone though. Nice. So let's pull the liquid nail out, get some blocks set up and get that mounted in. Well, we'll plane that actually and then we'll get that mounted in. Do good amount. This will outlast the project, but saw a guy on YouTube who's blocking out the body on his tea bucket and he used hot glue. Now I'm not sure how long you know, hot glue will last, but I don't think it's gonna last as long as liquid nail. Should be done here in like a couple 30 seconds. I've got a total love-hate relationship with this stuff. I love it, but I don't. And it doesn't matter what kind of gun you have, because when you're done using it, it never stops flowing out. too bad right there. 
nice and smooth. Probably should do the other side as well though. Man, these blocks are ugly. Good thing you're not gonna be able to see them once we put pig on this lipstick or lipstick on it. Well, whatever they say. All right, so we got this all clamped up. It's gonna take a little bit for it actually to set. The liquid nail is taking a lot longer than it actually should. And I think it might have to do with the temperature outside. So we'll let it sit, but we need to get this stupid planer put away and it's so damn heavy. Why the hell do they make these so heavy? But we'll put it on here because we're gonna end up using it again for another project. All right, guys, I want to take a quick break and talk about our sponsor at One Car Stereo. If you're looking to upgrade your in-dash experience for your touchscreen, this is going to be the box for you. A bit of a skeptic in the beginning, especially with stuff like this, but I have to say, I've been looking for a way to kind of enhance um, my experience, let's just say, on the newer vehicles with the in-dash that we have here. You're going to need your data cable. It's just going to plug in where you normally plug in your Apple Audio or Android Auto. Then what you're gonna do is it's gonna power up. It's gonna do a little bit of fun stuff here on the dash, and then it's gonna activate. And right here, it's already activated. And you're gonna see that your entire in-dash screen is gonna completely change. You're gonna have access to YouTube, Netflix. If you have Disney, Hulu, any of that stuff, it's gonna pop up here. And you're gonna actually be able to watch YouTube on your dash here. You have it. YouTube's all set up. You can watch everything right here that you would normally on your phone or your PC. You can take me on the road with you. Bam, there you go. You've got YouTube on your truck for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you remember in episode two or three or whatever, I don't actually remember where we actually ran the positive cable. We do need to shorten this up because we do actually have a lot left over and we got to run it to the starter here. So. I'm thinking we're probably just snip right here. And hopefully these are the right. Oh, yeah. This snips like butter. Found out I got like four pairs of these. I don't know why. So I don't really have the right tool to strip these out. So we're going to make do with what we can. As you know, the... Uh, the kit does say all you need is a screwdriver and some basic hand tools to assemble this, but that's like the biggest joke there is. You do need some pretty serious tools to build this thing. Not anything super crazy, but you know, it ain't as easy as what they say it's going to be. The wire looks thick, but when you actually look at the rubber casing that's on it, it is super well insulated, but Boy, is it pretty deceiving on how thick that wiring actually is. For the crimping, I'm just going to use this really, really weird tool. Now, some guys actually solder it into the connector. I've used this before, and um, it's about the best seven bucks I have actually ever spent. And essentially, the terminal goes right in there. Actually, twist it around that way. And then you just smack it with a sledgehammer and it crimps the actual terminal there with the wire in. Pretty cool actually. But get a little piece of wood and then we'll smack down on that. Never been able to figure out what that hole is for though. It's not like it locks into place. And yeah, could have done it off of the car, but whatever. We went by the manual and the manual was wrong. So let's see how this sucker turned out here. Now that's not bad there. Nice and crimped. And then, oh, thank goodness we actually put our shrink wrap on here. Since we're in the wire stripping mode, well, wire making mode, we're gonna go ahead and do the ground. For this, we'll just use two terminals. And we're not gonna actually shorten the cable up. We're gonna keep it like it is. But we will make sure we put these. Well, actually, since we haven't done the other side yet, we could have just waited, but to hit my fingers. Damn, that one actually jammed in so far it got stuck. Jesus. Oh, there we go. 
Put that right there. And then round two. And there you have it. Grounding is done for our battery. So if you're looking for the cheapest electrical kit too, well, cable wise, I ended up getting these from Jegs. And it was only like 50 bucks for both, which is actually a pretty good deal for heavy gauge wire like this. Stuff has really gone up in price. You can also go to Walmart and get one of those stereo installation kits. But I think those things are like 150 bucks now. They used to only be $29 back in the heyday there, which wasn't too long ago. But I used to just steal the wires out of those and pretty much toss the rest of the kit because you really didn't need anything else out of it. But I don't think they're that much of a deal anymore. You'd have to check. All right, gearheads, well, we got the bucket off the chassis and we got to do some rear end work on this thing so we can start prepping getting this painted and get that mounted back on there. But let's dive into our box of parts. We're like a kid running around on Christmas day in this one here and I just love getting parts, especially considering what I picked out here. So just some various components for our brake system, which we'll be working on. The other thing is I was kind of on the fence about how to go about kind of like an anti-theft, emergency cutoff, long-term storage. So I went with a two post cutoff. We'll keep it simple. Haven't really figured out where I'm gonna mount this quite yet. Maybe under the seat, under the bucket, by the motor, maybe by the battery, we'll see. The other thing that I really wanted to be different about was the taillights. It took me a while to actually figure out. I looked at Amazon, El Cheapos, and considering the fact that I was gonna drill in the fiberglass, I wanted something that if anything ever happened, I could replace it easily. So we're going with some 1950-ish Pontiac taillights. We're gonna skirt the law a little bit because it's got a blue center, a true blue center. It is incandescent on the inside, which we'll change these to LED later on when everything is kind of hooked up. But yeah, glass, metal, nice and fat. And it's something different that I haven't really seen on any other tea buckets. The other thing we got too is we got a nice 15 inch fan we're gonna install as well. And this is something that actually should have been done earlier on in the build, except there were some parts out of stock at the time and well, we just kind of bypassed it. So if you remember episode two, we did get all the brakes set up, we got the brake lines on the rear there, as well as on the other side as well. And then we drilled the fitting for the through frame here, bulkhead fitting for our rear brake system. Now we did stop here and we never went any further to the axle. Our parts came in, so we're gonna to try to build up this rear end here with our brake system and hopefully get that knocked out of the way because we do have some other things we gotta do as well. And the reason we're not going with the middle one, which I'll show you here in a second, is the fact that there's a little indentation there. So you actually can't get a socket over that. It actually has to be done with a box in. And maybe an extension probably would have been easier here. And then right here, we're just gonna use a simple double flare T that'll actually go on, which it won't. Let's say we gotta ream it out. Seriously, I hate reaming this shit out. So the hole in this is not quite big enough and we only need to enlarge it just a little bit, but this is about the only chrome piece <laughs> so far on the build and probably when you know, like Rick, you said, it'll be the only piece that I'm shining at the car shows. And let's see if this sucker will fit right on there. Oh yeah, look at that. So now here comes the fun part, putting some lines on. So the reason I couldn't go there is you can see that that's actually beveled up right in there. So there's no way you'd actually have to cut this T mounting tab here, fit it in, wedge it, and hope that it doesn't come undone while you're actually going down the interstate. Yeah, I could have put it over here as well, but it really doesn't matter because it's coming from up top. And then for the top, we'll have to come off the bulkhead with an AN6 to another AN6 to essentially this double flare piece here. So that's gonna go right in to the top of that there. We won't tighten that up yet till we run some lines and get it all set. But 
The brake line will come off here and then go right down in there. Coat hanger from the closet, and this is about the best I could find, and then when I went to actually unravel, it broke. So, but this will get us close enough to actually what we need to do, and then maybe we can go uh, find another coat hanger somewhere else. And we'll get our horribly bent brake line in there, which doesn't really look pretty, but it goes with our look that we're going for. Homemade. Homemade pre-assembled kit, right? It works. And we'll just slowly bend this. I'm not going to use a coat hanger on this one here, just because all my coat hangers are broken. I think I saw somebody actually use flex line back here, but uh, you're talking about for some spongy brakes if you do go that route. I think that'll be all right, just like that. And it sits off of everything. And then the weight being on the rear end here already with this sitting on here, these are already up as far as they're gonna go for now. So none of this is touching down here and no pinch points. Uh, could have gone over, but I think by going over the top, it would have actually looked kind of funny there. And then let's slap this one back in here and double check our bends just one last time. Really wish this axle actually had tabs built into it, but it didn't. And I didn't really realize I'm too late. But hey, there's that lack of planning, right? I'm not really putting any planning into this. I'm going as is, and I'm enjoying it. I don't know why they gave such large brake lines. There's no reason for all this largeness. Like everything was so long. It's almost like Speedway gave you and said, hey, this is what we had on the shelf. This will work for you for now. Hmm. I don't really want too much bend in it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't like the way it just dangles in the back like that. That'll be good. And for the ends that connect the actual brake line up, we're just gonna use that right here that's gonna go on that flare. And then that just goes right in there. We're gonna have to loosen up the brake line on the other side again to kind of maybe rebend that just a little closer in. But essentially it'll sit just like that. The hard line on this is a little long. Um, I do have another short one. Yeah, that's way too close to the tire there. And then for this side here, we're just using just a flared adapter here with an AN3 end on it, which I already got the long ass brake line attached to it. But this will just go, damn, did I do the wrong direction? No, never mind. I'm losing my mind. All right, so this is all done down here. It took me a little bit to kind of get this just right, um, but the lines are all set. Everything's hooked up properly. Uh, bent there and uh, There's a little vent there. We'll, we'll make sure we get that tape off Correctly and then on this side we did have some excess brake line um, What I do want to see though is uh, I think Speedway needs to kind of reevaluate some of the parts they're giving on these kits because some of these lines just They just don't work and there's also a better way to do it if you are going to opt for the kit because the whole goal on this kit was actually to do the bolt together process I wanted to do as little fabrication as needed, but that brake line kit stops right here. It doesn't go any further than this beam. So if you wanna go even further, it's gonna be about another 40, 50, 60 dollars worth of parts, depending on what route you get. And if you did like me, where you added one little nice little shiny chrome piece on the rear end, it might uh, jack up the price extensively there. But uh, yeah, definitely would like to see a change there. So also, if you didn't notice, I banged my shin on that jet ski just one too many times and finally had to pull that sucker out of here. So I put the T-bucket on some uh, pretty much uh, tire casters, wheel casters, vehicle casters, and got this thing in the corner because 
we needed to make some room for the bucket itself, which we're going to work on here shortly, which needs to get painted. So got the jet ski out of here and we saved our shins. But in the meantime, you know, we can actually pull this around kind of how we need and make just a little more room so we can actually work on this thing. Still doesn't move as smooth as I wanted it to, but it's a lot better than it was. And I think that's locked. There we go. I used to laugh at all the old guys that would use these on their knees back in the day. I ain't laughing anymore. So if you did opt for the idiot kit and went with the pre-brake lines, pre-bent brake lines, not pre-brake lines, um, you're gonna get two here for the master cylinder down here. And they're pre-bent, they're pretty close. They're not exact, but they're pretty damn close. And it even goes as far because the manual for the T-bucket sucks shit. So it'll tell you, master cylinder to brake light T. And then as well down here, you're gonna do master cylinder to proportioning valve, which is right on the rear end right there, which I'll, ah, well, it's actually right here, my bad. Um, but again, you can always bend your own, do your own thing here, it doesn't really matter. The only thing here with this bucket, well, this kit actually is the channeled body has to clear this. So they've actually cut a hole in the channel, which I showed you guys in another video. So. It is pretty low profile, the way everything is set up. So if you are gonna bend your own, just make sure that you actually, uh, make sure they're actually really, really low profile because otherwise it's not gonna clear. You're gonna put your bucket on, it's gonna bend all your lines on that in there. So that's gonna suck. So you got your front essentially and you got your rear. So your two chamber on your master cylinder there. So I'm gonna leave these loose for now so I can adjust these angles. Because if you tighten them up now, then your angles are gonna be like just completely all off. That'll go right down in there. Let's see if we can make these work. Like I said, these are not bent the best and uh, it still takes a little bit of bending again once you do get everything situated. And don't think I had the right wrench set because I did not. I literally got so frustrated because I've been using the same size box and wrenches this whole time. And uh, yeah. None of them fit on here, and I just emptied the entire drawer on the floor to find this one. So now for the rear, do the same thing here. I'll just get started. That way we can get our angles set just right. And this one's bent terribly as well. I mean, I get it. There we go. So we got to get this right the first time. Because I hate to be going down the interstate. This whole thing busts open. It'd be crazy. And then here's a better shot of what that's going to look like there. So just going to run to the back, like I said, to that end point for the bulkhead fitting. And it's going to hit your rear. And then same thing for that line there. It's going to go up. Do your brake switch, proportioning valve, and then up to the front of the T-bucket there. But we do need to do a grounding wire now, back for the battery since we do have the bucket off. So get some leads put on that, get some holes drilled, thinking right there. And using our little Harbor Freight free weekend tool. Can you believe Harbor Freight's actually giving out free tools again? Got a nice little razor blade. Well, actually they were giving out like three items this weekend but uh, I don't have one of those fancy tools for stripping heavy gauge wire. So went and got me a free razor blade. Yeah, look at that. Much better than that other one I was using. Whew, that one needs to be thrown away. I'm telling you, this little thing rocks right here. Let's not forget to put this on though. I'm notorious for not putting these on. And then it ends up being like electrical tape and it looks all janky. It's not what I'm going for. Put that right there. Mini sledge. B 
behold. Gosh, damn, this thing rocks. I keep wishing I could remember where I got it from, but I don't. So we're actually gonna do a couple grounds and you know, besides like the grounding straps, we're gonna do a couple just for the back because there's nothing worse than a bad ground. I don't like it. Yeah, and we're back to threading stuff again. Did I mention in all my other videos how much I really enjoy this? I found this to actually be the easiest way to just use a drill. Everything else sucks. It's really the only consistent way. That's it. Now in theory, this bolt should fit in this hole. Nice. Does it? Yep. That'll work perfectly for our ground there. We're going to do one more. We'll do double ground wire, but I'll add that somewhere else. So we'll keep this simple. Lock washer, washer, and we'll slap that right in that hole there. So this should be a good ground here. It's out of the way of a lot of things, and especially having the channel body the way it sits. I gotta be really careful on where I'm mounting a lot of stuff there. So that'll be nice and out of the way there. Oh, wow, I just found my espresso. It's been in front of me the whole time, been looking for it. And we got some nice premium, shiny, made in China terminals here. So this is what actually came with that kit I bought from Jags. It was about the cheapest one I could find. Came with some high gauge cable as well, but we'll zip tie these out of the area. So they'll be out of the way for when we put the bucket on and then that way we can drop the battery right in and then put these straight on. So. And that'll hold it there for now. So for this, we're just gonna use a 15 incher. I tried a few other different combinations, but 15 is gonna be the safest bet, especially with a little bit of spacer there. And considering we're using the original water pump for this motor and we're not changing anything, it is one of the larger or longer pumps. We gotta go small. If it doesn't work out, we'll figure out, maybe we'll change out the water pump later on, but I'm thinking the 15 will actually do fine for what we need it here. You can actually look down in here and you can see how tight this is gonna be down here. And you can see it is one of the longer, larger, whatever kind of pumps they call it here. And then we're also using a big block alternator mount there. So that really only leaves us with, I think I measured it at about three inches or so. When you put that other fan on there, yeah, it just bangs against this. A 16, 17 rubs against these welds up here. 15, it's like Goldilocks, man, it's just right. So I grabbed a few spacer options here and, you know, I grabbed a two inch. That ain't two inch. I measured that. It looks two inches, but yeah, it's more like two and a half. So that one ain't going to work. That puts us way too close, especially on the radiator there. And just to make sure we're doing the right side, because, you know, when these are mounted backwards, they sound pretty wicked. This side towards motor. Hmm. Max of 8,000 RPM. I would love to mount this to something over 8,000 RPM and see if we can shred it. I think we have an idea for a possible future video. That'd be pretty cool. But what I can't stand is these companies, these manufacturers that put these stickers on stuff and it just doesn't come off. And yeah, I get it, danger. Check your water pump, all this stuff. You will lose your manhood if you don't pay attention to this. But you end up spinning like forever trying to get all this stuff off it kind of sucks yeah you can mount it the other way and nobody will see it but yeah damn so 10 gallons of lacquer thinner later roll of paper towel and some other various items we can finally get this in but 
I know what you're saying. Oh, you should have put that in before you put the radiator on. Yeah, well, didn't like the other setup we had. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, we ended up taking the radiator off. It was much easier and forgot it was yeah, two bolts. Uh, and I almost screwed up. I swore this said towards radiator, but wasn't paying attention. Engine. Yeah, so we almost did that thing where it sounds kind of funny when you put it on. But I'm not too happy. The powder coating on this is cheap. And when I say cheap, I mean cheap, cheap. But we we'll fix that here with a little bit of engine paint. Uh, and you won't see that, but as I was scraping off the sticker, you could literally just scrape the powder coat on. It shows you how cheap it was. And this was a house brand item. I won't name the brand, but you can probably figure it out. Yeah, I was looking at one of those big Jezebel kits. I really like the way they look, but I might save it for when we do a supercharger. But then again, with the way this kit is actually set up, you'd really, really be stretching it. I think with a blower on this, especially considering where the radiator is mounted. But I know if you did like an Eaton or something, that would actually fit on here just fine. There's plenty of room. Cross-threaded. It's weird. But it goes in like the first couple turns, but then it stops. All right, well, we're busting out the tap here because something's seriously wrong with this hole. I don't know what it is. It's just not right. Maybe somebody ran the wrong size bolt through it at one point. Well, I guess we're going to have to, well, we had to take off the radiator anyways because we would have never got the other one in, so. But, so if this doesn't work this time, then we're just going to replace the water pump. Because I don't know what else to do. All right, this thing ain't going anywhere unless the blades fly off or something because the rivets failed. Let's give her a spin. No, oh, it's got a little bit of wobble in it. Hmm. I think that's just a pump machining because I spun the actual pump base and the pump base had just a little bit of wobble, but it doesn't have any flex to it or anything. So it is good, but hmm. Yeah. We'll find out. Guys, I'm hoping this is the last time we actually have to take the bucket off the body itself. We're gonna start getting it ready for paint and prep, and I did pick a color, but we still do have a few uh, little holes we have to drill here because I'd rather drill now before we start painting because, yeah, it just looks better. But we got tail lights. Uh, it took me some time to actually figure out the proper tail light to use. I even went the Amazon route to see if I could get some cheapo LEDs, and after really digging into it, I just didn't like what I was getting. I was afraid that I'm gonna drill a hole for some whatever china something that has no comparison in size and then it ends up burning out and you never get a replacement pontiac taillights i don't know 47 through 54 they've been using them so if anything actually happens to the taillights in the bucket i can always buy replacements so let's take a peek at these things again really quick before we actually start diving in because uh i really 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 wanted the ones that had the blue center. And, and these ones have the blue diamond center there. So it's legal in Florida, I do know because of the age. Um, so it'll work perfectly, but we're actually gonna use this back gasket here as our template. So we'll take that off. The um, light itself, it is glass. It's actually real glass and it's pretty, pretty heavy. Um, again, there's some different variations of this one. There were some plastic ones, but the glass and stuff really stood out to me. So we're gonna use this as a template because it doesn't actually come with one. So for the mounting, I am gonna do it low, but we're gonna follow the contour of the bucket itself. I know that's level. Obviously, yeah, I got a level here, but I do wanna mount them kind of in the corner. Um, I think that's gonna be the best route. Not in the far, far corner, but pretty, pretty close. Uh, let's see if we can get a good, there we go. And this will all come off. I love using a marker. And we'll just do our hashes here. That way I can follow along because I suck with numbers, man. I'm like dyslexic as hell. 
And we're doing just whole inches here. That way we have something to at least reference. Here's where you can really screw up on your pattern here because if I mess this up, you'd have some pretty cool little vents in here. And well, probably end up 3D printing something just to kind of fill the hole. But then again, there's some pretty, pretty serious tea buckets out there. And honestly, the way I see it, if it doesn't have any flaws, it's not a traditional tea bucket, right? But this really isn't a traditional tea bucket either. And then with that tail light there, I think that'll give it a nice, it's gonna be really interesting with these, especially these, <laughs> it's like a zit style headlight, but I'm digging that, that's pretty nice. Cool, do like double stack ones or something. I don't know, it's just wild. This is the fun part. I just love dealing with fiberglass because your hands are just never right, especially the day after. But. Damn, is that drill bit done for? Jesus. If we can lock this, it's all over the place. Damn, that's some thick stuff. Looks pretty cool. Oh yeah, that one went in a lot better. It doesn't sit flush though for some reason. I wonder if it's have to be torqued from the back. Oh, well, that makes sense. I think these have some play in them, so that's probably why. Yeah, so those will get tightened up a little bit. Well, let's put that back in there. Check out the inside. Ooh. I don't want to let go of that, that might fall. So let's take a peek on the inside, see what we got. So easy access to the plug. We'll do LED like I said, and then that clears the tank and all that fun stuff. So we'll have a little bit of trunk room back here that we can actually store some stuff, which will be nice. Maybe like t-shirt, shovel, little shovel, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Maybe a sandwich or something. And then right over here, same thing over here, that'll clear the battery box. But check out the side profile there. Definitely over the top. Sticks out pretty far, but from the back end, that's pretty sweet, especially when that blue illuminates in the middle. I'm digging that, that's something different. I don't think I've really seen this style on a tea bucket quite yet, so we're in uncharted territory here. All right, gearheads, well that's it for episode six. We got all our stuff picked up for the auto body work that we're gonna do on the bucket here. Primer, we're gonna go with the two stage. We're gonna do an epoxy and then a standard type here. I got the clear coats, all that stuff. So I think you're really gonna like the color. We still do have a lot that we actually have to do on the bucket itself. There's a few things left on the frame, not too much, but I'm gonna get working on episode seven for you all. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Hit the like and subscribe. See you for episode seven.